Let's so find the difference for, for two dimensional differential equations. Okay, so first of all, we discretize the domain with a fixed delta x and a fixed delta y. So this is delta x, this is delta y. And again, you find a difference. We don't store anything else about a function other than the value of the functions at these grid points. All right? And if we index the grid points by two indices, i and j, then basically we have a two-dimensional array that stores the value of the function at all these grid points. So u of i j basically stores the value of the function at x i and y j, where x i is equal to, let's say if this starts from zero, x i is delta x times i, y j is delta y times j. Okay, so once you have this two-dimensional array, you have a discretization of the function. Okay, and uh, uh, so so how do we? So now we have a discretization of the function. Now we also need a discretization approximation of the differential operator to solve the equation. So I'm going to give an example of the two-dimensional Laplace equation. Laplace operator, which is the operator of partial square u partial x square plus partial square u partial y square. So this operator can be approximated by the summation of two second order derivative operators in both x and y directions. So if at if this is at grid point i and j, Alright, let's say this is good point i and j. The second derivative in x can be approximated by u of i plus 1j minus 2 of u i j plus u of i minus 1j divided by delta x square. Then this is the first part. The second part is u of i j plus 1 minus 2 of u i j plus u of i j minus 1 divided by delta x or delta y square and you're gonna say you're gonna see that this is a linear combination of the value of the function at these five points and that is a five point stencil for our finite difference operator that approximates this Laplace operator. All right, so it's basically equal to uh, one over delta x times u i plus one j. Okay, uh, one over delta x square u i minus one j. So these are the coefficients on this and these points. I'm just going to write it down over here. It's one over delta x square. 1 over delta x square, here is 1 over delta y square, here is 1 over delta y square, and here is actually minus 2 times 1 over delta x square plus 1 over delta y square. So you have these five linear combination coefficients, and you apply to these five points, you obtain a discretization and approximation to the Laplace operator. So the next big question, following up, following what we did on the 1D case, is what is what is the matrix form? What is the matrix form of this Laplace operator? Why do we? Why are we interested in the matrix form? Because one, if we have the matrix form, then we know how to solve. A Poisson's equation that involves the Laplace operator, right? Two is once we have a matrix form, we can analyze its eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and figure out the stability of 
this approximation to all kinds of equations. But in order for me to have a matrix form, I need to approximate this differential operator uh, y squared in a times a vector u. So I need the vector u, but now my u is a matrix. It's a 2D array. In order to make it a vector, we need to flatten it in some sense. We need to convert this two-dimensional array into a one-dimensional array. And there are two obvious ways to do this. If you, if you study the languages like uh, MATLAB, the way it flattens a two-dimensional array is very different from languages like Python. All right, they come. They are inherited from languages uh, like Fortran and, and C. So MATLAB inherits Fortran, uh, Python inherits C. But they are different ways to uh, to discretize the, uh, the to to basically flatten the array. So so let's let's discuss one particular way, uh, and uh, I would uh, think that's like the Fortran way or a MATLAB way. So in MATLAB. A two-dimensional array is stored in like this. So u11 one, one is stored first. That's the same in everything. And the next use is u21. In Python or C, it'll be different. The next one is u12. But in MATLAB or Fortran, it is uh, u21. And u31, etc., to un1, where n is the number of grid points in the i direction. Okay, then next I have u12 and u22, etc., to un2. And then u13, etc., and all the way, last one is, uh, is u, of course, n and m. m is the number of grid points in the, in the y direction, in the j direction. All right. So, so once I have the uh, the vector stored in this in this form let's call it u vector equal to this now what is my matrix a what should a look like so remember if you look at the coefficients on on these they look like this And again, let's assume we have uh, uh, the simplest boundary condition, the Dirichlet boundary condition, which specifies the value of the function at the boundary equal to, let's say, zero. So first of all, the, the first question to ask is, what is the diagonal of this matrix? What does it correspond to? What does the diagonal correspond to? Yes, the middle point, because the diagonal represents the coefficients multiplied on one point applied to the residual, or applied to the Laplace operator at the same point, right? So the diagonal is minus two times one over delta x squared plus delta y squared. Okay, that goes all the way to the end. Now what is what is this value, the value right next to the diagonal? Yes, you again? Delta x, delta x square and why is why is it delta x square, not delta y square? It's yes, this is because oh, this is because the very next value is an increment in the i direction. Right, the i index has changed by one. The the sorry, the uh, the j direction stays the same. So it corresponds to the coefficient on this point. This is one over delta x square, and so is this. This is a decrement in the i direction. Yes. So u two one in MATLAB would be the second row, first column. So you're below your number. So it's a decrement in the y direction. 
in in the matrix if you if you if you if you print the matrix you are right you are right if you print the matrix the i direction actually goes <laughs> the i direction if you print the matrix doesn't go like that the i direction if you print the matrix actually goes in the y direction and goes downward this is different from this picture so so you're writing it according to the grid, not according I, to exactly. The grid. I'm writing according to the grid. Think in terms of the grid. Don't think in terms of the matrix. Okay. Right. That's, that, that's actually a very good point. It can be confusing because if you print the matrix, if you just type the matrix, print it, it doesn't show corresponding to this picture. It shows actually corresponding to the transpose and flipped version of the picture. So so that's that can be pretty confusing. All right. Okay. So so if you increment uh, in the i direction, it actually corresponds to incrementing the in the x coordinate. Yeah, any other questions? Okay. Now what is this value? The third value zeros because I have only a five point stencil I don't have access to I, I don't need the value at here but how about this point this point where are they they are they are gonna be n points away right they're gonna be n points away up to here, one over delta y square, and there is gonna be a diagonal line here. There is also gonna be n points away that comes over here and like here. So instead of a tri-diagonal matrix, I have a pentadiagonal matrix. I have five non-zero diagonal lines, but they're not together. They doesn't. They are not like five diagonals together. Uh, two of them are n points away. Yes. Uh, is there a hole in the one over delta x squared diagonal where this goes from one end to the other? Very good point. There is not. So if you think of the matrix as blocks, where each block is n value, n n values. Right, so okay, this block has en ends up over here. So this block corresponds to one horizontal line of the grid. And that horizontal line has a tridiagonal form, just like what we have in one dimensions. And the next block also has a tridiagonal, but there is nothing here. So there is a there is a zero here and here. So so the the diagonal like one entry above and one entry below actually has a gap, has a one entry gap between these blocks. All right. Okay, so, so one thing we can do is